happy Tuesday. Welcome back, back to math for today. Today we are going to be learning how to use AM and PM labels for time. We're also going to learn the special word we use to mean 12 of something. So if I have my clock that looks just like this, what time is it? If you have your clock out, that would be awesome today because then you can practice putting the time uh, as we work with time today. Okay, so what time is that clock? It's 12 o'clock. But there's other names for 12 o'clock, aren't there? For 12 o'clock, we say 12 o'clock. We show it like this. But it could also mean midnight or it can mean noon. Okay? At midnight, both of the hands are pointed to the 12 and it's the middle of the night. And what are we usually doing in the middle of the night? In the middle of the night, we're usually sleeping. At noon, both of the hands are pointed up at the 12 and it's the middle of the day. And what are we usually doing at noon? Well, we're either just getting back from lunch, if we're at home, maybe that's when we eat our lunch, or we're beginning our work in the afternoon. A new day is going to start at midnight. So a new day always starts at midnight. At noon, half of the day is gone. Okay? Each day, there are two 9 o'clocks. There's a 9 o'clock in the morning, and there's a 9 o'clock at night. And we need to have a way to, sh to share with people which 9 o'clock we mean. So when we come to school in the morning, it's about 8 o'clock. Okay? We don't come at 9 o'clock but we would come to school at 8 o'clock, or hopefully earlier. School starts at 8 o'clock. Okay, now, that would be 8 o'clock a.m. Any time before noon is called an a.m. time. Okay, many people call midnight 12 a.m., 12 o'clock a.m. All right, so we have midnight is 12 o'clock a.m. The p.m. time begins at noon. So noon, we say, is 12 o'clock p.m. That's noon. Many children go to bed at 9 o'clock at night. If we want to say 9 o'clock at night, we're going to say 9 o'clock p.m. Okay, now the abbreviation AM stands for ante meridium, which is a Latin term for before noon. PM stands for post meridium, which is the Latin word for after noon. Okay, so we're going to practice with AM and PM times. So I'm going to show my clock. If you want to make your clocks say the time as well, that would be awesome. If you have your own whiteboard or piece of paper and you want to practice writing this time, these times down with our AM and our PM, that would be amazing too. So let's take a look at this clock. What time does this say? It's morning. So I just told you that it's morning. It's morning. What time is it? Well, the clock says 10 o'clock. Okay, and since it's morning, is it a.m. or p.m.? If it's morning, it is a.m. So we write it as 10 o'clock a.m. Okay, what about this time? What time does this clock say? It's afternoon. You're seeing four o'clock, aren't you? Four o'clock what? If it's afternoon, is that a.m. or p.m.? 
Absolutely. I'm hearing you screaming through the screen. P.M., Mrs. Friedrich. It's P.M. You said it afternoon. If it's noon or later, it's P.M. All the way until I get to midnight, then it's A.M. again. So afternoon, afternoon, post meridium, past noon is P.M. How about this time? It's morning. Nope. Try again, Mrs. Friedrichs. There we go. Now let's try this. It's morning. What time is it? Well, you know that it's 6 o'clock. And if it's morning, is that a.m. or p.m.? Right. A.M. What about this? It's evening. It's nighttime. It's evening. What time is it now? It's evening. And here you say it's 10 o'clock, Mrs. Friedrichs. And then what's our label if it's evening, a.m. or p.m.? Right, it's p.m. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at our clock. We want to find out how many hours are between certain times of the day. So I'm going to move this to the side so that we have our clock here. Okay, how many hours are between noon and 2 p.m. Noon and 2 p.m. Well, every time that my minute hand gets around the clock one time, that's a whole hour. So one, two. So how many hours which were between noon and 2 p.m.? There were two hours. What about between noon and 6 p.m. What about noon and 6 p.m.? It means my hour hand has to go around all the time, every hour, until I get to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, I need to get to six. Oops. And six. So between noon and 6 p.m., there were six hours. What about between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m.? We started two. Now, we know that our minute hand is going to circle around one whole time to be an hour. So I'm just going to move my hour hand right now because we know it's going to stay up here between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. 1, 2, 3. So between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., there were three hours. How many hours are between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m.? 1, Two. There are two hours between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. What about between 9 p.m. and midnight? 9 p.m. and midnight. Let's look. 1, 2, 3. There are three hours between 9 p.m. and 12 o'clock midnight. Okay? Now, something important to remember. And if this is something that you struggle with, write this down somewhere. Check if it's in your red folder. If it's not, maybe make a note for in your red folder. How many a.m. hours are they? Are there? A.m. hours, there are 12. How many p.m. hours are there? Thank you. 
there are 12. So if you have 12 a.m. hours and 12 p.m. hours, that gives you a total of 24 hours. 24 hours. So from noon to midnight, there are 12 hours. Oops, sorry, you couldn't even see that. Noon to midnight, there are 12 hours. How many months are there in a year? How many total months? There are 12. How many inches are in a foot? There are 12 inches in a foot. Okay, so we have something in common. Half of a day is 12 hours. There are 12 months in a year. There are 12 inches in a foot. Okay. Now, that 12 is going to be really important for us because there's a special word that we can use when there's 12 of something. 12 of something is a special word called a dozen. When I have 12 of something, that is a dozen. Eggs are often sold by the dozen. There are 12 eggs in a dozen. Okay. Um, if we have half of that, if we'd have half a dozen, that would be six. So a dozen is 12. Okay. We hear that a lot with eggs. You hear that in the bakery a lot if you ask for a dozen hard rolls. And if you have half dozen, I'll write it up here. And if you have a half a dozen, that means that you have six. Okay? You could do that by literally, if you had an egg carton, and you had eggs in there, and you wanted to split it, and you split it in half, this here would be half a dozen. It's half of a dozen. Half of a dozen is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So, half dozen is six, a dozen is 12. We use that when we are talking about uh, the number 12 and splitting it in half. So, six twelfths is the same thing as half of a dozen. So if we have half of a year, that would be six months. If we have half a foot, that's six inches. Okay, so let's keep working with that. We will not forget that because that is something that will continue to come to us very frequently in math. Okay, so now that we have looked at dozen, being 12, half dozen being six, why don't we go ahead and grab out our math worksheet. So for today for your math worksheet, you will need your sheet, you will need a pencil, and that is it. So go ahead and grab out your sheet, grab out your pencil. Ooh, I made a mess now on my desk. It'll be okay. Okay, your sheet and your pencil. Make sure you have your name on it. And today's date is January 5th, 2020. January 5th, 2020. And let me go ahead and zoom this in for you so that it's a little bit bigger. Okay, let's go ahead and read problem number one. It says, John bought a dozen ice cream bars. He ate one ice cream bar. How many ice cream bars are left? So he bought a dozen. How many is a dozen? 12. I like to sometimes box my things and I like to write next to it what that means. So you can do that in yours if you'd like. So we started with 12 bars. 
he ate one of them. If he ate one, are we doing a sum some more or a sum some one away? Sum some one away. So we have to get rid of one bar. We want to know how many are left. So we're going to start with 12 bars. We can just use bars instead of writing ice cream bars. Or if you wanted, you could do I, C, B. But I would rather just say bars. 12 bars minus, he ate how many? One equals how many are left? Well, what's one less than 12? One less than 12 is 11 bars. Now for my answer, I'm going to write 11 ice cream bars. Okay, 12 bars minus one bar equals 11 bars. And we have 11 ice cream bars. Remember, if you ever need to pause to make sure that you keep caught up, you're welcome to pause. Just make sure that you get started right back when you are done with the problem. We're going to move on to number two. Today we get to use our Venn diagram, and we're going to use it to answer the questions. So as you can see on our diagram, today our title is Children's Pets. So we're talking about pets. You can see we're talking about dogs, and we're talking about cats. You can see here we have Dan and Ellen who like only dogs or have dogs. You can see that Tom, he's in the middle, he must have a dog and a cat or dogs and cats or dog and cats. And then we have Bill, Mike, Nan, and Kim. They have only cats at their house. So remember that we have to look for that word only if we want to do only this one part over here. I even use the word only. All right, let's look. It says, how many children have a dog? It doesn't say have only a dog. It just says a dog. So we have to count these ones here and in the middle. One, two, three. Go ahead, and you're going to write down three. Dan, Ellen, and Tom all have dogs at their house. How many children have only cats? Only cats. So since I want only cats, I have to look over here. One, two, three, four. Only cats. I cannot count the middle because only means there's no dogs involved. Okay. How many children have both a cat and a dog? That's our middle. How many have both? Tom only. So that's just one. Now it wants to know what pet does Mike have? Have. Here's Mike's name. I have to find Mike over here. Oh, here he is. What does, Ma what does Mike have at his house? He has a cat. So you're going to write cat on the line. All right. Number three. It is morning. What time is it? All right. Morning. I'd like to sometimes underline morning and I sometimes like to put the label right away so that I don't forget it's morning all right what time is it well I'm looking at my clock and I know it's half past and between 9 and 10 I have to go with my smaller number so it's half past 9 which is 9 30 now we said it's morning that's a.m. so I need to write a.m. after it so I can't just put 9.30, I have to put the a.m. Now let's look at this next problem over here. It says it is evening, evening. Mrs. Friedrichs told me that evening means p.m. Okay, so let's look, it's evening. What time is it? My minute hand is down at my six, that means half past. That also could mean 30, right? That's what that means. It's 30 minutes after the hour. And what is my hour going to be? It's in between the seven and the eight, I have to go with my lesser time, which is 7. So I have to write 7.30. Am I done if I just write 7.30? No, I have to write my label. It's evening, so I have to write p.m. All right, we have two more sets of problems to look at. Number four says write the fraction that tells how much is shaded. Okay, so we want the top number to be how much is shaded, 
The bottom number is the total number of squares. One, two. That's my top number. How many total squares are there? That includes the shaded ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two out of eight are shaded in that first problem. Look at the next one. How many are shaded? One, two, three, four, five. I have five pieces shaded out of how many total? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six is my bottom number. It's not five over one because there's only one shaded, one not shaded. Nope. Your bottom number is always your total number of pieces. Always. Your bottom number, your denominator, is always your total number of pieces. All right, let's find some sums. Here we want to first look to find a sum of 10. I found one, did you? 6 and 4, that's 10. And then we're left with 2 and 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 10 plus 5. That's 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. Now with these money problems, where do we have to start? Dimes or pennies? Pennies, right. So we are always going to start over here. So let's count down. 1 plus 8 is 9. And 5 plus 2 is Seven. I didn't have to trade anything because I did not have 10 or more. Okay. Let's look at the second problem. We have 5 plus 6. 5 plus 6 is 11, isn't it? 11 is more than 10, so I need to trade. And if I trade 10 of my pennies away for a dime, I'm still left with one penny. Can you see your number here, 11? Okay, now let's finish counting. 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So we have 51 cents. And our last problem, 7 plus 7 is 14. Carry your 1 because we traded it, and we are left with 4. Here was your number 14, right? This helps you to know. The 4 is going to be left over. The 1 gets traded away. Now, 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 plus 1 is 9. All right, now that we have finished that front side, the back side is for you to show me what you've learned. When you're done with this sheet, go ahead and put it into your Tuesday folder.